The talk of the Commonwealth is the scams that are out there, like fake fundraising, the unwanted calls that are that, that are coming in. And here to, to keep us safe and bring us the, the straight dope is Nancy Cahalen from the Better Business Bureau. Nancy, good morning. Good morning, Hank. Thanks again for having me on. Yeah, so listen, uh, we've got some good news when it comes to some of those robocalls people have been getting, huh? Absolutely. Um, the FTC and I think it was like 38 uh, state partners, uh, including our state of Massachusetts, sued and shut down four sham charities that have been harassing people uh, with illegal robocalls about donating to a charity. They have made over a billion, that's with a B, like in BBB, calls. Um, So having these bad uh, actors out of uh, play I hope it has some kind of an effect on the number of uh, robocalls that we receive every day. Yeah, boy, I hope so, too. I mean, that would be great. It, I have to tell you, it seems as if they're more and more they're figuring out how to get through to people on their uh, on their cell phones. So what are the things that some of the things that we need to know about these sham charities and, and this action that was taken? Well, these folks, uh, when they made their calls, um, they claimed that the proceeds were going to homeless veterans, victims of house fires, breast cancer patients, children, um, and well-meaning Americans were enticed to support them. um, And they also used some high-pressure tactics, So, which to me just doesn't fit well with a a charitable, uh, a call looking for a charitable donation. When we look at the calls... um, some people were called more than 10 times in a single week. Um, over 7 million were called twice in an hour. And oh, more man. than 500 phone numbers were called 5,000 times or more. So th- these were harassing people as well as trying to scam them. So um, we're glad that they've been shut down and been fined. Unfortunately, they weren't able to pay pay most of the fines and um so they'll be suspended but um the money that they did collect um is going to be uh directed towards charities similar to the ones that people thought they were donating to so that's a that's some good news yeah too. that is actually that's some great so news how, for once the punishment fits yeah. the, the, the crime so so how do i know right Mm-hmm. Exactly, and I know that this is where, where where you were going. So, how do I know when somebody calls up and they yeah. the name sounds good, and I want and I feel like I'm doing a good thing? Right, right, and you do, and um, and it it's worth taking a little extra time uh, to make sure that your donation is going um, to you know to the cause that you think it's going to. So, first of all, don't trust your caller ID. You know, we've all heard that. Um, you can manipulate that and uh, dishonest fundraisers will make that look like it's coming from your local uh, area code. So you'll be more apt to answer thinking that it's a, you know, it's a local uh, business giving you a call. And when you, when you do pick up the phone, um, if you get a robocall, it's a pre-recorded message. Sometimes it takes you a second to figure it out that it's not a live person. Um, Hang up. Hang up right away. Because even if it was a charity, um, they don't have the right to call you with a robocall unless you've donated to them in the past. And they need to tell you that right off. So this was news to me. I thought charities and um, uh, politics, you know, for elections, they had kind of the green light on robocalls. But apparently it's not all their calls. There are rules there, too. Don't be rushed. Don't let them pressure you. These people were pressuring and harassing. Um, Don't fall to that. Um, And ask a lot of questions. So this is where you get back at the scammers. Just keep asking questions. They'll get sick of dealing with you and hang up. So, uh, you know, be aware that this is happening. Um, Yes, there are four big players that have been taken um, out, um, but others will move in to fill that space because it's very, very lucrative. You know how they always get me? They they get me because when because uh, I you know listen if if it looks like it's it's some kind of a bogus number and my phone even screens some of these these things out for me nowadays, but it'll show up. It looks as if it's almost my number, and I go, well, it must be somebody, you know, in from the city. It must be somebody that I know because the number looks right. so close to mine. 
exactly. Sometimes they'll even uh, spoof your your number. So you look at it and it's your own <laughs> phone number. You're like, what's this all about? Oh, yeah. um, they can't scam you if you don't answer the phone. So they're trying all these things to get people to answer. So the best thing you can do is if you don't recognize the number, just don't answer. It'll go to voicemail, and um, if it is a doctor or a relative or a neighbor, uh, they'll leave a message, and you can call them back. Boy, you know, now I, I got to tell you, one of the things that happens, too, is that this one that I got yesterday asked me right up front uh, if, I, if I wanted to, to stop getting calls, like hit the, the, the number two. Uh, but, of course, you hit the number two, and you never stop getting calls. Right, because that makes your call, your number more valuable. So you an, you answer the phone, ooh, that makes the number more valuable. They're selling these numbers on the black market. And then um, not only did you answer, but they said press 2 and you did. So now they know you're a real person answering the phone and you followed directions. So um, sometimes when you hit that button, you're taken somewhere else and they start asking you um, questions about yeah, um, your personal information, like account numbers and things. They really do. These scammers really do uh, get you, and it's all these tricks. Nancy, uh, another one that I have, have heard, the bit about the local number is really something, but another one that, I, that I've that i really heard about is that if I say anything, particularly if I say yes or no, somehow this is going to be used uh, uh, against me, that I really, what you're saying is you've just got to hang up. You really do. You really do. Don't engage. And um, I don't know if you remember, but a few years back, there was some kind of a, a, a phone scam going on where you'd answer and they'd say, can you hear me? Mm. And then, of course, you'd say yes, right? Yeah. And um, we never really saw how they used that um, because they probably just, just saved that away for play you know for the next phase of the scam they were collecting those yeses uh so i've never seen how that was used but they clearly had a plan to use those um you know yes recordings that they were making so don't um just don't respond to them and as i said the best thing to do is hang up or put your phone on do not disturb and everything goes straight into um right. voicemail and you don't have to deal with it and so I got to tell you, the one that kills me, though, was, like I said, this one that I got yesterday where, like, right up front, they said, hey, if you don't want to get these calls anymore, go ahead and press this this button. Well, now I know that that's part of the, the scam. I mean, that was amazing to me that that actually made it more valuable to them that they're going, hey, we got a live one. This guy will, will interact. Mm -hmm. But there, there is a way for me to block these telemarketing calls, isn't there? Well, um, there are a couple of things to consider. First of all, um, to block legitimate telemarketing calls. So that's, you know, legitimate from companies that are calling you maybe to, to clean your air ducts or something. Um, you would want to put your number on the do not call list. And um, that includes your cell number. So you're, you know, all phone numbers are, you can put on that. And that's going to stop legitimate telemarketing calls. But these robocalls are illegal to start with. And so they don't really care about the laws and the fact that you're on the do not call list. So we need to use different technology to stop them. You can look into different kind of call blocking um, apps that you can download onto your, on your cell phone. Um, I downloaded one um, a couple of years ago. And it was a free one, and it really cut down on, um, on the number of calls I was getting. So you can um, investigate that. There are several out there. And the carriers have software now um, available uh, to help us block these calls. It's a huge problem. We're spending $1,000 or more for these phones, and we're not answering them. Yeah, boy, absolutely. Hey, what, best way to get in, in touch with you and put the BBB to work for people? Okay, so the best way, 24-7, is to go to our website. There's a lot of information there, and that's bbb.org. So if that's not your cup of tea and you want to talk to a live person, you can call us, and we have a toll-free number, 866 566 
888-789-9222. So if you're anywhere in uh, Central or Western Mass or Northeastern Connecticut, you can call that number. And between the hours of 9 and 4, Monday through Friday, we have live operators that can help you. Very good. Nancy Cahalan, President, CEO, Better Business Bureau, serving Central and Western Massachusetts, Northeastern Connecticut. As always, thank you so much for joining us this morning. My pleasure. Thanks again for having me on.